How does equity work if Riot is private? So many private companies, uh, Riot isn't private by the way, it's owned by Tencent, but many private companies have equity. So um, you might think, oh, if a company is private, it can't have equity, right? But equity at the end of the day is a share of the company, right? And so when a company is private, they can still have equity in the company. The catch though, is that when a company is private, there's often not people willing to buy the equity because it's private, right? And so if you take uh, equity in a private company, you're relying on one of two things to happen. Either A, it eventually goes public, which then provides you a opportunity to sell your equity because it's public. That won't be the case for every company though. And even if it is the case, who knows when it could happen. And so if you're getting equity in a private company, when you started a company, like at a startup, um, it's always like, it's up in the air, it's a risk. You may never get any money from it if it doesn't go public. Um, and if it does go public, it might not be worth anything, who knows? So that's always a risk in terms of taking equity in a private company if you're working in a startup or something. The other way that equity in a private company can be worth something is if there's something called a liquidity event where you are able to sell that equity in some way. Perhaps the private company got purchased by somebody else. And so if the, co the private company is bought, uh, of course, that would mean the equity is also bought, even if it didn't go public. And then, you know, you as an employee would be paid for that equity. Another possibility is sometimes private companies will do stock buybacks or something um, from within to like, you know, be able to give their employees some chance to like cash in on the equity they have in the company, even if it's like not going any public anytime in the near future. And so like, as an example, years and years and years and years ago, when I started at Riot, I got some equity in the company. Um, and then a couple of years after I started, um, there was, uh, they basically were like, hey, we are gonna like, you know, purchase equity from all of you. And like, here's the price you can sell it at. And you were given an option as an employee years and years and years ago, if you had some equity to be like, hey, um, you could sell it now or hold on to it. And so that, that can happen, um, but it's by no means reliable or a sure thing. It really just depends on the company and depends on the situations, things like that. So that was just something that was a possibility years and years and years ago. I read somewhere that 70% of NVIDIA employees are millionaires, equally equity compensation be crazy good. I mean, yeah, it depends on the company, right? If you work at NVIDIA, um, then yeah, if you had equity, like it's crazy now. Some NVIDIA employees though have golden handcuffs now. It's basically like, hey, do you not like your job? Too bad, if you leave now, you won't get that millions of dollars of equity, right? So that can be rough depending on like what you're trying to do with your life. But yeah, like if you're working at NVIDIA employee and you've got equity for working there, like you're obviously in a great spot right now. That happened to me when I started at Riot. When I started at Riot, I, you know, like I said, I had some equity in the company and eventually Tencent bought Riot, right? That's something that happened a number of years ago. And if you had equity, like you got to, sh you get, to, you, you got like rewarded from that uh, Tencent buying Riot. And so I ended up being in a spot where I made like, you know, a pretty, a pretty decent amount of money to like be able to live in LA uh, because of that, because of that um, buyout that happened. So the champions you design give you bonuses every year? No. There was a joke at one point going around the office that they did, but then people actually thought it was true and we had to stop making the joke for good reason. And once there was this new designer who joined um, and he, he came from finance like me. So he was like very aware of things like, you know, bonus incentive schemes and stuff like that. And one of the older designers went up to him and he's like, hey, so welcome to the team. Um, what did you negotiate for your champion dollar bonus? And the new guy was like, what, what, what do you mean? champion dollars negotiate and they were like you know like what did you negotiate you get paid depending on how your champions do and like the the new designer he kind of like went white and he was like uh oh no he went like pale and he was like oh no i didn't think about that and it's like okay don't don't worry it's, it's a joke it's a joke we don't that's that's not something that happens <laughs> yeah if your company goes up a billion million percent you're very happy with equity but the thing is the thing to remember is equity is a risk um, especially if you're taking equity in a startup. So for every startup that like, you know, you start there, you get tons of equity in it and they pop off and you like come out a millionaire, right? There's many, many, many other startups that, you know, you're never gonna see any of the money from that equity because, you know, maybe the startup fails and then it's just not worth anything or it's just such a long time before there's actually any opportunity to sell it, things like that. So if you're taking equity in a startup, especially, it's always a risk, right? It just depends on how things go. Right, so that's 
you know, things to think about. When I started at Riot, um, I mentioned already I got some equity at Riot, right? And I had the option of like not getting that and getting a starting bonus. And at the time, you know, I was a kid fresh out of college. I didn't know like what what I should choose. Should I choose equity or should I choose like like cash, uh, like you know, like a starting bonus of cash? And a lot of my econ, econ friends at Dartmouth, they told me to take they t to take the starting bonus. They were like, like you don't know if stock at that company you're starting at is ever going to do good at all. You don't know if that company is going to do well or not. So. Because remember, I started at Riot like in season, like right at the end of season one, season two. Like, you know, League of Legends was a very different spot back then. And so a lot of my econ friends at Dartmouth, like very, very smart people who, you know, like work at hedge funds and investment banks now, they were just like, dude, like, why are you, why are you taking equity in some startup company? You should definitely just, you know, take whatever cash bonus they'd be willing to give you instead. And I didn't listen to them. And I'm glad I didn't. Turns out, uh... You know, Riot ended up doing really well, but like I didn't listen to them because I was like, I'm going to work at Riot because I think this game is incredible and I think this company is incredible and it's going to do really well. So I, at the time, was, you know, willing to take that risk. Although that's another thing to think about too, is just sometimes you might not be in the financial situation to take a risk, right? I was really, really fortunate that um, I'd worked all throughout my childhood. Um, and so I had a bit of money saved up after college. And on top of that, I had, you know, two parents that were able to financially support me as well. So I was, I was very privileged to be in a position where I could take a risk on something like that. And so that's another thing, like, I look back on, like, honestly, I was just in a very lucky and privileged position as well to be able to not have to worry about, you know, waiting a couple years for equity to, to work out versus, you know, taking an upfront bonus. Why do you buff uh, Balance League by nerfing what's OP? Wouldn't it just be fun to buff, more fun to buff the counters? Sometimes that's what you should do. It's not always the answer to, buff, to nerf what's OP. The thing you have to be careful about is power creep. Power creep is when you keep buffing the weak things and you never nerf the top end, and then the overall power in whatever things you're buffing just goes up and up and up over time, which can be bad for the game depending on how it expresses itself. So as an example, this happened in League of Legends with damage. Uh, we kept uh, adding new items that wanted damage to feel good, we added new runes that wanted damage to feel good, and the end result over many years, over the last like five years, this damage went up and up and up and up and up. And the game got a lot more damage heavy, a lot burstier, which is why in the last couple years we've been doing things like the durability patch and a number of other things to bring damage down. But basically, like, if you just keep adding and buffing damage, because, you know, damage is fun, without necessarily like, you know, then adjusting for all those additions, you end up with damage creep. And then there's just more damage in the game overall. And so that's an example of like, here's what can happen if you only buff, you only add, and you never and you don't always, uh, and you never, never take away. And so that's something you definitely have to be cognizant of when balancing a game is sometimes you do need to nerf 